Hi boys and girls, this is our last day at Holiday Bible Club this year and I hope you've had a fantastic week. I really look forward to seeing all the things that you've got up to, all your crafts and all your challenges as well, so remember to send them in to us. Yesterday we looked at a man called Solomon who was super, super wise and hopefully we are going to remember that we should make wise decisions in life too. I hope you've learned lots of lovely things this week and today we're at our final day and we are going to look at the ultimate king. We are going to look at the king who made this amazing sacrifice. So first of all, I want you to think, have you ever sacrificed anything? Now, we don't usually make big sacrifices in life. Um, we don't have to take animals. Um, into church with us like they would do in some religions and um, we don't have to take them up to altar or kill them or anything like that there as a sacrifice but we can sacrifice other things maybe like our time we might sacrifice our time to um help your big brother or your little brother or sister and um, maybe to do their homework if you were in school you could um, maybe sacrifice some time to help your mums or your dads aunties uncles granny grandas to do something in the house Maybe you sacrifice playing outside with your friends in order to do homework. Or you sacrifice um, time playing in order to tidy your room. So there's lots of different things that we can do to sacrifice things. And we're going to look at the king who made the ultimate sacrifice for us today. And that king was Jesus. So um, Sammy and Louise are going to be along a little bit later on to tell us all about that. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave you with Amy for our final challenge of the week. And I think you're really going to enjoy this one, boys and girls. So have a lovely eve um, evening. And um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you all really, really soon in person. So have a lovely night um, and enjoy. Everybody, we've come to the very last challenge of the week. I hope you have enjoyed the Holy Bible Club this week and I hope you have enjoyed taking part in our challenges. Today, let's get outdoors, go outside and uh, today I'm going to do a bit of skipping um, and we're going to see how many skips I can do without uh, stopping and then I'm going to challenge you to have a go. Maybe you don't have a skipping rope at home but maybe you could use a bat and a ball and see how many times you can uh, bat the ball without dropping it. So. Let's give it a go. Jonathan's going to record for me and let's see how many I can do. I've been doing a, a, a wee bit of practice so hopefully it won't be too bad. Are we ready? too badly but I actually lost count I think I got around 70 and um, but let's see if you can count yours a little bit better so um, I'm gonna challenge you now have a go at some skipping or something else outside let us know what you've got up to and send it into our Facebook page see you soon Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna dip in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna dip in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven.
such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. Such a lot, when you got not a lot, what? Be happy. Hello boys and girls, my name is Louise and I'm going to tell you a story tonight. And first of all, I want to see if you can guess what my story might be about by looking at the pictures. So first of all, see if you know what the pictures are and then see if you can put them all together and try and guess what you think the story might be about. So boys and girls, I hope you were able to guess that all the pictures that you had seen belonged to or were used by a king. And I'm going to tell you about a very special kind of king today. And it's called King Jesus, who is king of the people. So I'll start off at the very, very beginning. So Jesus was born into the world as the son of God by Mary and Joseph. And you might hear this story sometimes at Christmas time. Jesus is the baby boy in the nativity story, maybe that you have done at Christmas if you're Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger is baby Jesus. So Jesus was growing up and was an adult and he was living a normal life like any other normal person. But he wasn't actually a normal person because Jesus never sinned. He never did anything wrong. He never told any lies or he never was nasty to someone. Um, so he was a perfect person because he was the son of God and he was the king of the people. He told lots of stories and he performed some miracles because he was the people's king. So on this day, Jesus was traveling to a city called Jerusalem. So he was traveling on a donkey into Jerusalem, as you can see in the picture there. So as Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, there were some people there who didn't like Jesus very much. They were jealous of him because the people listened to him and the people worshipped him because he was the king and they believed in him. So they were quite jealous. Some people who were quite high up, a bit like our politicians today, they were quite jealous of Jesus arriving in Jerusalem because all the people wanted to see Jesus and they wanted to listen to him. So they became very jealous and they made a plot against Jesus to try and get him to do something wrong. And obviously Jesus was a perfect man, so he would never do anything wrong. So they came up with this plan and they made friends with Judas, one of Jesus's 12 disciples, and they paid Judas to tell them where Jesus was. And when they found where Jesus was, they went and they arrested him. So Jesus was arrested, and a bit like today, he was taken to a court um, to decide whether he was guilty or if he was innocent. And when he went to the court, the man in charge of the court was called Pontius Pilate. And there was Jesus and there were some other prisoners. And Pontius Pilate, he knew that Jesus had done nothing wrong. And he knew that he did not want to be involved in Jesus being found guilty for something he didn't do. So Pontius Pilate washed his hands of everything. And he said to the crowd, who will I set free? So there was Jesus and lots of other prisoners lined up and the crowd decided to free a man called Barabbas and he was set free instead of Jesus. So Jesus then got sentenced to death on the cross and I'm not sure if you could imagine how difficult or how horrible a death it would be to die on the cross but that is what happened to Jesus. He had to carry his cross up onto the hill and he had to put his cross into the ground and there he was crucified on the cross. His hands were nailed and his feet was nailed to the cross and he died on the cross alongside some of the other prisoners. So two other prisoners were alongside him and they all died on the cross. Jesus was sent to the earth to be a king for God, his father. 
And some people were happy that Jesus was crucified, but Jesus still had some friends and they were very sad and they were very worried that Jesus was being crucified. But boys and girls, the really good thing about this story, although it's not very nice someone being crucified and killed on the cross, the really nice thing about this story is it has a really nice ending. And Jesus' friends went one day to see his body in a tomb, which was, which was covered with a stone. And what they noticed was that the stone had been moved, a big heavy stone had been moved away and they went into the tomb to see Jesus's body, to pay their respects and they discovered that Jesus was not there. And that is because Jesus by the Holy Spirit had been taken up to heaven to be with his father and sit at his father's right hand as it says in our Bibles. And this is a, a really good story because Jesus died on the cross for our sins and everyone on earth today has sinned and whether that be lying about something or maybe not doing what you're told or maybe not even tidying your room or maybe ha just having horrible thoughts about someone everyone sins i sin your mom and dad sin everyone has sin in their life and because jesus died on the cross to be our king and is our king still today that means that we can be forgiven if we ask jesus into our hearts and we ask for his forgiveness we can try and live our lives the way he would like us to live so there's a really nice ending to this story so boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our story about King Jesus and I hope that maybe someday one of you will ask Jesus into your heart to be king of your heart as well as king of the people. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed listening. Hi boys and girls, welcome to Holiday Bible Club this year. Hopefully you're having lots of fun this week, learning lots about Jesus and the Bible and also having lots of fun and making some nice things as well for you, for you to enjoy. So we're here today to help you to learn your memory verse that you're going to be learning all about this week. And I need some help from you boys and girls that we're going to play a game, but I also need your help in learning the memory verse as well. So first of all, I thought maybe we would go over it a couple of times. So I want you all to join in together at home and Jeremy and Laura, I want you both to help me here, okay? So we all say it together really, really loud and as best we can after three, and hopefully you can all see the words on the screen. One, two, three. As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. Romans 14, verse 11. Well done, everybody. But do you know what? I know for a fact you can all do it so much better. So we'll try it again and this time I want you boys and girls to shout it out as loud as you can at home and I want both of you to shout it as loud as you can as well, okay? After three, one, two, three. As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. Romans 14 verse 11. Well done, that was super everybody. So now we're going to play a little bit of the game and have some fun and you can all join in at home as well. So hopefully you'll be able to see that we've lots of balloons on the floor and Laura and Jeremy are wearing some funny balloon hats as well. So what you need to do to join in in the game is to get your mummy or your daddy or a grown up to help you write the words on a little piece of paper or if you can write the words of the memory verse out yourself then that's super. And then we want you to tear up those words into small little pieces of paper and pop them inside a balloon and then blow the balloon up as big as you can but without bursting it. And then you can get a grown up to help you tie it and then we're going to have a competition. So I'm going to tell all of you boys and girls at home and Laura and Jeremy what the competition is so we all listen carefully. What I want you to do, and it's a competition to see whether the boys or the girls are better. I'm cheering for the girls, my side. Boys, boys. <laughs> so what I want you to do is when I say go, I want you to burst your balloons as quickly as you can. Okay. Inside, I want you to unwrap all the little bits of paper and I want you to put them in the right order of the memory verse that we've all said together as fast as you can. And as soon as you've got them in the right order, I want you to shout it out as loud as you can. And then we'll see who wins. And whoever wins gets to burst and pull all the other balloons as well. Okay, but I have to let you in on a little secret. I jump really easily, so I might jump when all these balloons are being popped. Okay, so is everybody ready to burst the balloons? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. Ready? Steady? Go!
Uh, oh, Laurie's going to beat oh, him. No. As quick as you can. These weren't folded up as well as mine. Oh, let's see. And remember, whoever wins gets to burst the extra balloons. You have some of my work. Oh, this is some really stiff competition. Are you all enjoying it at home? Joining in and bursting your balloons? Oh, who's going to win? Who's going to win? Oh, it's close. Yeah, I'm awesome. Yeah. Are you nearly there? Oh, I think Laura's nearly there. Hi! Laura, you know, got it. Yeah, but I don't know how much dirty as I did. Oi! Go, 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 from a book in the Bible called Romans and the Bible is where we learn all about Jesus, about how much he loves us, about how much he loves us so much that he died on the cross to save us from our sins and how he wants us to be his special friend. So first of all it says, as surely as I live, says the Lord, <clears throat> every knee will bow before me. So what does that first part mean? Well maybe some of you have been lucky enough to meet the Queen or a member of the royal family or maybe you've seen people on TV get to meet the Queen, maybe to get a special prize or medal. And whenever we meet the Queen, well, we have to bow or we have to curtsy because she is the Queen. Well, in the same way, Jesus is our heavenly King. And whenever we meet him in heaven, we will bow before him out of respect for who he is and for how much he loved us. And the second part goes on to say, every tongue will acknowledge God. Well, we use our tongue to talk to people, to tell other people things, and we'll be telling other people about Jesus, and that's really important. But this Bible verse also tells us that one day, everyone in the whole entire world will be able to say that Jesus is King, and Jesus is our Lord, and he died to save us from our sins because he loves us that much. So that's what this memory verse tells us. It tells us that Jesus is our heavenly King, and that one day everyone in the whole entire world will know that he is king and what he did to show his love for us. So will you all remember that for me? Super. Will we say it one more time all together? After three. One, two, three. As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. Romans 14 verse 11. Well done everybody. Thank you so much for taking part and enjoying the game with us and we'll hopefully see you all soon. Bye! Bye!
Dear Lord, we thank you for the things we've learnt this week at Holy Bible Club and we thank you for the opportunity to worship you and learn more about you, even if it wasn't in person. We pray that you will help us to remember that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross to save us and so we may get to know you better. We part that you will help us to live a better life because of your word and what we have learnt this week. We thank you for your love and we ask that you help us to live our lives in the way that pleases you. We ask this in your precious name. Amen.